What's going on everybody? It's your man Cleveland Terry and based upon the last video where I talked about how to remove duplicates out of your Serato using iTunes as your main database, I got a lot of resistance from people basically saying that iTunes is crap and you know there's no reason to use it. Well, look, iTunes is not crap. Uh, is it bloated? Yes. I mean, it's probably the most bloated software out there. It's bloated like me when I have some dairy, but that's not the reason that I use iTunes. Now, before we talk about those reasons, I need to um, preface a couple of things. I need to make sure that we're clear on a couple of things here. One, I don't use iTunes to use Apple Music, to play any of my Apple Music, to do any music matches. I don't do any of that stuff with iTunes because that is a recipe for disaster. If you do those things, it's gonna screw up your entire catalog, your entire database, and then you're gonna be looking at me like, how come all my stuff is gone or the files that I uploaded are coming back completely different. Do not use iTunes for Apple Music. Do not use the iTunes Music Match. Stay away from those things if you are a DJ. Having said that, let's talk about what's good about iTunes. Number one, now this is specific to people that actually use Macs. If you do use Macs, iTunes is a default music app on your Mac. So it's already there. You don't have to go around looking for a software that will work. Everything is already placed on your computer the moment you buy that computer. So that's really, really convenient. To those people that are thinking that iTunes is killing off iTunes, I don't think they're really gonna do that. What I think they're gonna do is they're gonna strip it down and remove all the things that aren't necessary in a music app, like apps and calendar syncing and iTunes syncing and your iPod syncing, all that stuff is gonna go away. Since we're moving into the cloud anyway, it's not necessary. So I think we're gonna see a really fast, stripped down speed demon of a music player. Two, it's universal. It works on PC and it works on Mac. So you know that if you have to move from your PC or to your Mac that you're gonna have software that's gonna be able to be used. <laughs> you know, every time I count, I screw everything up, so we're not gonna count anymore. We're just gonna remove that whole counting. We're just gonna talk about what's good about it. Even though it is bloated, the things that it does, it does well. Uh, it stores all of your music. Now, as I've said before, I don't have like Apple Music or matching on there. What I use iTunes for is a repository for all my music. Speaking of repository, for all you people that think it's funny that a black man can actually speak intelligently on camera, well, I'm gonna help you out. Basically, repository is a big ass box where I hold all my shit. Feel me? And once I download all my music, it automatically goes right into the big box and I don't have to think about the fact that my music is where it doesn't need to be. I know where it's gonna be. So that's important. If you're using things like Serato as your database or anybody else, well, you have to manage your own database, which means when that file goes to your download folder, you have to put it wherever you keep your database. If you're using your download folder as your music holder, well, you're gonna end up deleting a lot of files. It's just a fact of the matter. You need to move it to your music folder or wherever you're using for your DJ database. If you use iTunes, you don't have to think about that. iTunes is gonna put it in the music folder under iTunes in its database. It's gonna create your art. It's gonna create all those things that that you don't even see anyway. Another big feature of iTunes that a lot of people don't really know is you can actually create multiple iTunes databases on the same system. So let's say you have ADD and you just gotta have your clean version of music somewhere and your dirty version of music somewhere. That way, when you're playing places, you can just open it up and make sure that all the stuff is clean and make sure that all the stuff is dirty. Maybe you wanna reserve one database just for videos or just for show tunes. I don't know, I'm just throwing stuff out right now. But what I'm saying is with iTunes, you can actually create multiple databases that are stored on your computer and as many as you want. You can have a database on an external hard drive. And the way to do that is when you launch iTunes, holding down the option button, as you're launching iTunes, an option's gonna pop up that says, choose which database you wanna use or create a new database. Once you do that, it remembers that database. So anytime you go into iTunes, you're looking at that database. You wanna switch back to your other one? Just hold down the option button, go to the old database, click on it, load it, you're good. I mean, for some people, 
that maybe do a lot of video stuff on occasion, but they don't wanna hold that whole thing on their system. Well, this is an easy solution. You can actually just create a database just for your videos. And then when you go do video stuff, you load that database, open up Serato, it's gonna read that new database and you don't have to worry about anything. So there's a lot of options. I know in certain applications, Rekordbox, Virtual DJ, you can actually select another database that you want them to access and it's going to store it right there and you don't have to worry about this whole cross contamination thing. But because a lot of people use Serato and because I still use Serato and also the other ones, this is a good solution for me. This is also good if you have an external drive and say your computer crashes and you need to use somebody else's, but you don't want to boot up from the drive. You can just plug in your hard drive, hit that option button, load iTunes off the external folder, and from that point on, as long as you're using it, it's going to see that folder. And then it's just like it's your computer. Now, of course, once you unplug and that person reopens iTunes, if it can't find that external drive, it's gonna ask you, well, choose the one that you want us to use. It's not like it's gonna corrupt everything and you're screwed. It's just gonna say, we can't find this one, where do you want us to look? And then you go back to your music folder, you click on that, problem solved, you're done. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is that iTunes doesn't care which DJ platform you're using. If you're using Serato, it doesn't care. If you're using Virtual DJ, it doesn't care. Rekordbox, it doesn't care. Tractor, it does not care. Which means that if you are like me and you don't have just one software that you use. Maybe you're not just using Serato, but you're also using Virtual DJ for karaoke or something like that. If that's you, then using iTunes makes the most sense. If you're jumping around from software to software, then you actually need something that is consistent throughout all those softwares. And that one thing that's consistent is iTunes. There's a lot of good reasons why you would wanna do that. One, if you are jumping from software to software and you wanna make sure your playlists work across all of the apps, well, you're gonna to wanna to use iTunes because you can create your playlist in iTunes and all of those apps are going to see those playlists. So you know that if it works here, it's gonna work here, here, and here. If you're using Serato crates, which I do, so I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but if you use Serato crates and you go into Virtual DJ, well, Virtual DJ can see it. Rekordbox can't. So you're gonna create your own crates. You need to find an alternative, which for me is Record Buddy and I actually have a video coming through. Hopefully I can get it up on Friday, but that video is coming very, very shortly. But you could eliminate all those problems just by using iTunes and creating those folders right in iTunes. There are still several folders in my iTunes, which I call like music standards, classic rock and early 50s, 60s, like Sinatra and all that stuff, the classic crooners. And I don't need to change it because it doesn't change. These are just standards that I will go to. No matter what software I use, just by opening up the iTunes hierarchy, I can just go in there, click on it. I know it's all gonna work. I don't necessarily have to worry about a Serato crate being corrupted and now I can't find it anymore. Or of the syncing of my playlist that it didn't get over properly. I know if I use iTunes, it's going to get over properly because it's always there. And you can use iTunes anywhere. You're in iTunes, it's an easy drag and drop. It makes it nice and convenient. It's not like you're in iTunes, now you gotta open up Serato, now you gotta drag all that stuff around. It's just far more convenient. Now, do I use iTunes as my main playlist folder? No, I use Serato for that again. My iTunes is, is a big ass box where I hold all my shit. And the only reason why I don't use iTunes is that the changes aren't immediate until you actually close both out. Close iTunes, close Serato, open it back up again, and then they're open. So for me, if I'm trying to make a quick playlist on a gig, well, I have to use Serato or whatever I'm using because it's just easier to, to drag and drop. Um, I know some people in the past have stated, well, that you know none of these things work and it doesn't sync properly. It does now. There is an actual um, XML file that all of the apps point to, that way ensuring that it's getting the right information and they're both communicating both ways. So you don't have to worry about things not syncing properly or the things you do in iTunes not showing up in Serato or a record box, virtual DJ, it's gonna show up. All right guys, so that's it for this video. Let me know what you're using. If you're using iTunes or if you stop using iTunes or don't use it and what's the reason and maybe some of the information that I just 
presented to you, maybe that at least gets the ball rolling, thinking that maybe it's not what you thought or maybe there was more options in it. So just let me know what you think, guys. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like button. If you found it really helpful, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I'm doing a lot of videos and there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of hopefully helpful, say that too many times, and there's a lot of hopefully helpful tutorials that are coming down the pipeline. And uh, I appreciate all the people that have been subscribing and have been watching my videos. Um, as always, always a pleasure. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'm doing a lot of things on Instagram that I don't think are necessarily the same as what I do on here, but it's always DJ related. Um, guys, always a pleasure. I'll talk to you later. We'll talk soon. Peace.